Greetings from the Boogie Down South Bronx. This is Jeffrey Cortez reading another chapter of my book, Memoirs of Pastor Rahatabla, Pentecostal Private Eye. Right, so we'll get right into it. Chapter 22. Chapter 22 Photoshopping Juan Marcos. And the entry scripture verse from Proverbs 28, verse 13. Whoever conceals his transgressions will not prosper, but he who confesses and forsakes them will obtain mercy. Okay, so let's see what this is about. All right. Reverend Juan Malco was someone who Raja had admired for years. He had located from a southern state to our urban city and pioneered an admirable model church. Sister Eva was a new member at a uh, at Trail Blazers Pastor Sylvia Jatusavis Church and had a history of nitty-gritty social advocacy for our under, underserved, underserved communities. As Sylvia and Raja were organizing a small local conference, Dr. Eva Marx de Cristo learned that Juan Marco would be one of the presenters. Eva then venomously expressed that she had no respect for him. On the day of the conference, Eva appeared strangely calm at the presence of Juan Marcos. But soon after we moved away from the eye of the potentially brewing storm, we were suddenly sucked into the manifested storm. Reverend Juan Marcos suddenly and explosively began yelling at Eva. He appeared very outraged as he turned over a table of brochures that was situated near his display. Now, Pastor Raja writes in his journal, Dear Tabla, Today we underwent a little demonic fart of sorts as we went about to make God's kingdom better. I guess that effort could become more portrait within my, any delusions that the Lord really needs our cutting edge logistics. Previously, Pastora Silvia Jatosavis approached me to assist her regarding a desire in her heart to bring more affordable and relevant leadership training to local pastors. It was an honor to be invited to join her in organizing this event. Clergy from seemingly successful urban-based ministries were invited to be headline speakers, sharing insights from their own church growth. Now, weeks ago, Dr. Eva Marx de Cristo was very, to say the least, displeased when she learned that Pastor Juan Marco would be one of the main speakers. We were at a loss as to why such a well-centered, eloquent advocate of the downtrodden would just incoherently grumble about the man we would have attributed to Eva just somehow being envious of him, but that conclusion would have not made sense. She was a new Christ follower and never made any claims, no interest in any type of formal ministry. It was usual in many Spanish Pentecostal churches for new believers to claim to be guided or misguided to believe that they had some grandeur calling. That is a spectacular spotlight level form of ministry. Eva had no such designs. She humbly came to the Lord after a strong in your face approach to giving voice to the voiceless 
in many of our oppressed communities. Eva's surrender to Jesus was more of a surrender of our, her radical fire for social equity in exchange for an even more powerful fire. A fire accompanied by a new teachable personal spirit and God's holy written word. As a teen, I myself have to, had the joy of attending some of Juan Marco's dynamic Bible studies. At that time, the new pastor that came from another part of the country seemed to relate well to both churched and unchurched kids. He had the resources to expose street kids to better life perspectives. Juan Marco also em empathized with the disenchanted church race youth, offering them nicely equipped uh, opportunities to spread their ministering wings inside the safe space of his newly acquired church building. So it was a wonder why these two wonderful folks in my life had such a tremendous personality crash. The crashing sound of Eva's brochure table and Juan Marco yelling, how dare you, at her, was not necessarily part of a planned conference intermission. But Pastora Silvia and I were grateful to God that at least it happened at the inter intermission. Eva had been asking for the gifts of tongues, but today she was utilizing her old life street French, laughing and telling Juan Marco, how do you ever like that? <laughs> Sylvia and I grabbed and rushed these two into the pastor's office with the aid of a couple of volunteers from a community football team. In the office, Pastora Silvia laid down the law for a civil mediation between the two children of God who appeared to be emerging hooligans in, of all places, her first dream conference. Juan Marcos claimed that Eva had been harassing him for the past few months regarding one of his promotional brochures. Unlike many of the conventional storefront churches in the city, his church was a missions church. That is a church that gets funding from by a large financially robust religious denomination in order to be and remain planted in what they have identified as a needy area. The ministers of such churches then go around the nation for a short period, once a year, making presentations of their urban missions work and soliciting continued funding. This includes slide presentations, videos, dynamic tear-jerking stories of lives that have been touched and transformed by their work. Apparently, Eva came across one of such brochures which were produced at a print shop owned by one of her acquaintances. She was more than bothered that the picture in this particular promotional literature were from urban areas where Juan Marcos Church wasn't located at nor had any significant interactions with. She found this to be false advertisement in order for his church to receive continued high funding as well as impressive equipment. Juan Marco then reported that he attempted to explain how this type of advertising was not necessarily deceptive, but Eva was not having any of that rationale. He then done cut her off from having any communications with him, nor with his church, whose staff was instructed not to accept any messages or visits from her. Juan Marcos reported that for a short period of time, Eva ceased pursuing the heated matter. Now at the convention, he noticed a small table near his promotional table. It was Eva's 
little table with brochures with content he found very insulting. The pamphlet had a picture of his son with an unflattering narrative. At that point, I asked to see the item. Yep, there it was. It was a picture of Juan Malco Jr. taken off social media. It was photoshopped to look like the world famous side street New York City Times Square guitar playing single singing naked cowboy raising funds. Eva acknowledged having printed that pamphlet and setting the little table next to Juan Marco's promotional display. We asked her why would she do such a classless thing. Then she pulled out a glossy newsletter from Juan Marco's ministry. There was a bloated article regarding his ministry, reaching out to gang members and notorious drug dealers. Within the article, there was a picture of Juan Marco's arm around Eva's son, Evan. It was a picture that was taken during a Bible study conducted for young Christian leaders. The way that, that the picture was crafted in the article would give readers the impression that Eve, uh, Evan was one of the young criminals Juan Marcos Ministries had reached. Eva tearfully said through grinding teeth that her son is an honor student that never lived such a life and that seeing that newsletter was the last straw that broke her heart and any patience especially when she, a single parent, like many parents from the neighborhood, fought tooth and nail to keep her son on a path for a bright future. Eva was hoping that her stunt would trigger some kind of emotional intelligence, aha moment in Juan Marco's psyche. I felt quite disappointed that Juan, Pastor Juan Marco wasn't quite processing Eva's pain. Sadly, what surfaced was that he was more invested in changing the narrative to favor the idea of doing what it takes to build a kingdom. So the resulting dispute between us three and Juan Marco was so sharp that we parted company. We hope that someday we may reconcile like St. Paul and St. John Mark did. Even though both biblical saints weren't hell-bent on building a costly and highly promoted empire. I hope you enjoyed this chapter. Uh, those of you that are interested in buying a copy, a paperback copy or Kindle version of my book, um, the information is written below as well as the link. Uh, you could purchase this at a uh, Amazon through Amazon. Also, you could purchase it as a pickup uh, at a Barnes & Noble. So you could go to Barnes & Noble's website and there, of course, uh, choose the location nearest to you, your address and then put the order in for a pickup uh, copy, paperback copy. Okay, and uh, again, again, the description of the intentions of this book, uh, this uh, quirky novel is written below. And uh, I hope you uh, get to enjoy it as much as I enjoy writing it. Okay. Bendición and bendiciones.